Well, greetings one and all, and welcome back to another video here with your host, Andrew. Today you join me with some inky fingers as I have exchanged the ink cartridge for today's review. Uh, but the pen which we're going to be having a look at, as named in the title, is the Caveco Supra. So let's head over to the table, inky fingers and all, and have a closer look. Before I crack on with today's content, I just want to take a moment to thank everyone who's watched and supported my channel from the get-go, and to those who've supported me on Instagram. One person I'd like to highlight in particular is Alicia, whom you may know as Adventure Denali. This video wouldn't be possible without her kindness. So this pen was gifted to me, along with some beautiful paper from Alicia, and I will be featuring that in today's video. If you would like to check out the paper, it's by a lady by the name of Danica58, and you can find her on Etsy under the same name. For today's artwork, I will be featuring Bean, who's a very charming ferret and belongs to Alicia, or Alicia belongs to Bean, whichever way you want to have a look at it. And I will be using Dye Mine Golden Sands as an ink, which was very kindly gifted to me as my secret Santa gift from the Phantom Pens UK Facebook group. I haven't actually got around to using it yet, so I thought now would be a quite a good time to give it a whirl, especially on this uh, paper from Danica58. So now on to the history. And as a reminder, if you do want to skip these sections, you can use the chapter markers down below. Caveco has had a long history within Germany and is probably best known for a sports model. More information about that later. Founded in 1833, they started life producing wooden dip pens, which was the tool of choice during that time. Interestingly, they weren't known as Caveco until 1889, when the company had new owners. The name Caveco came from the founders' surnames Koch, Weber and Company. Hopefully I pronunciated that correctly. Now thanks to the Hamilton Pen Company for that tipped bit of information. In the early part of the 20th century, Caveco enjoyed a lot of success with their dip pens and fountain pens and had accumulated over 600 staff as well as exporting overseas. It was in fact their 1909 safety pen that brought the company much credibility. The pen came with an innovative screw thread which prevented leaking. And of course, leaking was quite synonymous with eyedropper pens back then. Unfortunately, this success didn't last long and financial issues arose. This was mainly due to the fact that other manufacturers were making more interesting filling mechanisms and more attractive materials. However, in the 1930s, Caveco, under the new ownership, enjoyed much success, with now is regarded as Caveco's most popular model, that being the Sport. Skipping forwards a few decades, and unfortunately, the success of Caveco eventually plummeted, and in the 80s, Caveco shut up shop. Fortunately, this wasn't the last we heard of Caveco. In the late 1990s, a penthusiast by the name of Michael Gulbret gave Caveco another shot. Along with his passion for the brand, which he was quite well known for, he had poured a lot of time, money and energy into recreating the brand as we enjoy it today. Now, let's have a look at the actual pen, so please join me in the unboxing. One aspect which will jump out at you straight away is the pen's presentation. Its vintage inspired tin is extremely charming and features wonderful imagery of their logo and the pen. But what I appreciate the most is the tin's size. Now for collectors of pens, having large boxes can be off-putting, especially as they can take up a considerable amount of space. For Caveco to go for this form factor, is not only environmentally conscious, it also doubles up as a wonderful stationary tin. The contents are minimal with a felted plastic bottom, care guide and the pen. Overall, I'm really impressed with the presentation. One small point of contention is that there is no converter provided with the pen and the only way to actually ink up your pen is with a short international cartridge. I just think this is a great shame considering what you pay for the pen and hopefully maybe in the future an international cartridge converter could be supplied with the pen. 
Okay, so now let's have a look at the practicality of this writing instrument. This is where things get interesting and why I feel that this pen is certainly underrated, especially in comparison to the rest of their lineup. You see, this pen has a party trick and that is in how it transforms. Do you want a full size pen as you've got larger hands? Sure, no problem. This pen will provide it for you. But what if you're a pocket pen person? Not a problem. So how can this pen be a two-in-one, you may ask? Simple, it comes with a bower extender. Simply add or remove the section to change the characteristic of this pen. Okay, so going beyond the transformative aspects, what else does this pen have to offer? Let's take a closer look. The section of the pen is comfy, albeit on the smaller size, but with a slight hourglass shape, it does allow your fingers to fall into its form. Larger hands may not enjoy the shortness of this section, as the section does step up onto the barrel. It would be wonderful for companies to take into consideration different section lengths. Just like shoes, our hands come in different sizes. Of course, this would be a challenge to manufacturer, but I feel that one as users would benefit from. In terms of weight, this pen is great. Whilst slightly on the heavier side, the barrel extension can either simply add or reduce that weight, making this pen very versatile for different lengths of hands and weight preferences. Of course, adding the cap to the back can change the counterbalance of the pen. So especially if you've got the pen posted in full length, this may make the pen a little bit too long for you. Of course, if you do decide to use the pen in its short form, you are going to be limited to using short international cartridges. So do take that into consideration. In terms of the pen's finishing, the brass is very handsome, but being brass, it will tarnish quickly. Now, for those that don't mind polishing or the tarnish, this pen will tick a lot of boxes, especially if you're part of the EDC community. Simply put, if you don't enjoy polishing your pen or patina, then I would probably avoid the pen. Now, just one last final thought of consideration. If, however, you do enjoy the form factor of this pen, you could consider maybe employing someone with some Arushi skills to apply lacquer to the pen. This, of course, would save from the patina whilst giving you the practicality aspects of the pen and enjoying it for what the pen is. This pen is shiny for a while. As mentioned before, this will either appeal or not. But the beautiful aspect of this pen is the machining and precision used in making this very fine writing instrument. The only negative aspect of the pen is that it is slightly slender, and whilst that may not be an issue for some, it could be a point of contention to others. I personally prefer a slightly more broad barrel, as it fits the crook of my hand better. Oh, and this pen is a fingerprint magnet. It's also worth noting that this pen comes in three finishes as of the time of writing this review. You have the option of standard brass, steel, or the rather fetching fire blue, which uses hand bluing techniques. Now, going back to the actual pen itself, I feel that perhaps if you are part of the EDC community or you like materials which will evolve over time, then this design will really suit you. As you see that uh, there's quite a lot of people out there which really enjoy patina. And if this is your cup of ink, then perhaps this might be something to consider, especially as the fact that this will make your pen very individual. Branding on this pen is minimal and can only be found at the top of the cap. I always appreciate when a company doesn't plaster their branding all over the pen. To me, this can be obnoxious. As for the nib design, it's nice that they've included the logo on there. However, if you do wish to have something which is a bit more premium and shiny looking, you could always upgrade to the Caveco premium nibs. Whether that of course is worth it for you, I would leave it entirely up to you. Overall, I really enjoy this pen's aesthetics. Its cylindrical shape may not suit everybody's tastes, but I feel it offers contemporary charm and it certainly looks different enough to separate it from other pens on the market. Now, let's have a look at the writing and drawing experience. 
Okay, so just a little bit of a rant here. I did try to reach out to Caveco to ascertain whether or not they were Bok or Yovo Nibs. But on both occasions where I've tried to email them and contact them on social media via Instagram, they haven't actually responded. In fact, they've actually seen my message on Instagram and no one's actually given any response whatsoever. I do find this a little bit rude to be quite frank and I hope that maybe within the next 48 hours I do get a response because I would like to know whether they are one or the other. Of course, I have reached out to members of the community and some people have said that they're Yovo and some people have said that they're Bok. So I'm a little bit perplexed. Having said that, it is one or the other. Okay, so let's now talk about the Nibs performance. Now, if you have used a Leonardo, Estabrook or any other manufacturer out there within reason, it's quite likely that you've used Bok or Yovo before. Therefore, how do I say anything different about this Nibs performance? Simply put, I can't, and for that, I apologise. For those who have yet to experience either manufacturer, you can expect a pleasant writer with great flow and smoothness, and as one writes across the page, it will write with great ease. Now, I do sound a bit dismissive, and for that, I apologise. But I wish that these companies would at least offer some different types of grinds or something. Now, of course, in Caveco's defence, they do have their premium nibs. But from the actual initial impressions I've got from the community, they don't seem to be that much different to that of the regular steel nibs. So apologies for this being quite a short section, but there's not a whole lot for me to say. Okay, so now for some final thoughts on this pen. This is a pleasant pen to write with, and it certainly has enough unique features to make me recommend it. Although I would argue that there are more interesting metal pen manufacturers out there, certainly at the same price point. But £75 is a competitive price, and I feel that this is something which people should take into consideration. I also enjoy that this pen utilises an extension barrel, which could be useful for some. On the flip side, if you are planning to use this pen in its shortened form, you do have to be mindful of keeping this extension tube safe somewhere. Of course, one can't deny that Caveco is known for their sport line, and certainly the range is reflected in the models available for the pen. It's a shame that there isn't more colourways available for the Supra. Certainly, I could see potential in colour mixing caps, barrels and extenders and that I would find pretty fun. Okay, it is worth noting that we are at the beginning of the year and there could be room for Caveco to come out with more supermodels. Uh, the Lily Put seems to get a lot more love, yet I would argue that this is a much more practical pen. Okay, so going forwards, Whilst this doesn't have anything to do with the Supra, which is actually being reviewed today, all being well, later this year we will eventually see the return of the Piston Field Sport. Now this pen has been missing from action for quite some time, and it has been something which has been requested by members of the community for a good number of years. So this is exciting in many ways because it will give people the opportunity of being able to have longer writing experiences. We also have, coming very soon, in March, the lovely spring collection of the Iridescent Sport, which is part of the uh, collection editions, and a rather fetching green Lilliput. Now, that really brings it towards the end of today's video. Um, thank you for listening, and apologies that the writing experience uh, section was a little bit dismissive, but I have to give you my honest opinions. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is just invite you all to sit back, watch and enjoy. Until next video, I shall see you soon. Bye bye for now.